Earth Science is brought to you by Physics Classroom. Pleasant day to everyone, here we are again, to explore another marvel, pertaining to the place where each one of us exist. No other than, the Earth. We're down on our way, to talk about, the Earth, and its subsystems. As a springboard, let us first focus, to these, key questions. What are the four, subsystems of the Earth? How do matter and energy flow, in Earth's subsystems? The first subsystem, is the atmosphere. Atmosphere is the gaseous layer, above the Earth's surface. Primarily, this is composed of different gases, such as nitrogen and oxygen. The atmosphere is the blanket of air above us, which serves as our protection, from the hazards and radiation, of the sun. Also, it traps heat, so that we Earth dwellers will not be frozen. The atmosphere, predominantly composed of 78% nitrogen, barely 21% oxygen, and 1% other gases like argon, and carbon dioxide. Probably we may wonder, why in the atmosphere, oxygen is only 21%. We are all aware, that oxygen is essential, for us to live, because this is what we need, to breathe. Nitrogen is non-reactive. On the contrary, oxygen is highly reactive. If we reversed, the magnitude of the two elements, nitrogen is 21%, and oxygen is 78%, what do you think will happen? The second subsystem, is the hydrosphere. Hydrosphere is the water part of the Earth. This comprises the solid, liquid, and gaseous water in the planet. Solid or frozen water like ice and glaciers, are usually seen, in the polar regions. Liquid, apparently is the water in the ocean, in the river, in the lake, and other bodies of water, in the Earth's surface. Water in gas state, is characterized by water vapor. thirds or 71% of planet Earth, is covered by water. The quantitative description, of water in totality, consists of 97% salt water, found in the ocean, and 3% freshwater. If we will further quantify, this 3% freshwater, 69% is frozen, 30% is groundwater, and only 1% is the water in the surface, which are utilized for human activities, or essential consumption. The third subsystem, is the geosphere. Geosphere, is the part of the Earth, that contained the entire planet, from the center of the core, to its crust. The Earth has three layers namely, the core, the mantle, and the Earth's crust. The preceding structure, shows the configuration, of the different layers of the Earth, from the innermost, which is the inner core, to the outermost, which is the crust. The center of the Earth, is the inner core, which is composed of solid iron and nickel. The outer core consists, of molted iron and nickel, which is the reason why, magnetic field on Earth exist. The mantle of the Earth, is the thickest layer. Moreover, the thinnest layer is the Earth's crust, which is the outermost layer of the Earth.
The fourth subsystem is the biosphere. Biosphere is the zone of the Earth where all forms of life exist. It is called the sphere of life. Biosphere is none other than the Earth itself. As everyone may say, Earth is life. Included in the biosphere are the living organisms in land, in water, and in air, even enormous or tiny microorganisms. Even the dreadful coronavirus is part of the biosphere. Now let us explore how energy, also matter, and other particles or nutrients are circulating in these four subsystems of the Earth. In this diagram, we can perceive that the substances or nutrients are actually connected to one another. The flow of matter and energy are interconnected within the system. Atmosphere is connected to the hydrosphere, and as seen in the diagram, they have mutual connections. Likewise with hydrosphere to geosphere, and geosphere to atmosphere, and the aforementioned subsystems are all connected to the biosphere. As an example, this may start from the solar energy. The heat from the sun causes the water in the hydrosphere to evaporate. Going where? Obviously, it's going up to the atmosphere. If the water vapor becomes heavy, eventually, the clouds can no longer contain it. What will happen? Rain will fall on Earth, and that's the geosphere. Due to heavy rainflow, parts or parcels of soil with minerals and nutrients are displaced to some other parts of the earth where these minerals and nutrients can be used or recycled. Collectively, these are connected to the biosphere. As human beings, we are stewards of the earth. We are likewise part of the flow or circulation of nutrients. When organisms died, the nutrients were merged to the soil. Human activities affect the earth, so we are significantly connected to one another. Since we are interconnected, activities or undertakings done on earth may cause a ripple effect to different forms of existence here on earth. Whatever we do, it can cause an impact. So let us all be reminded that we have only one Earth where we are all dwelling, and we must be reasonably protective of our one and only Mother Earth. Here's to say thank you to everyone, and that would be all for today's lesson. Hoping that you have gained a valuable learning as a product of a meaningful realization about the earth where we lived.